The PS5 gaming console was released in November 2020 and it's hard to believe that it's already been two years since its release. In that time, it's established itself as a formidable rival to the Xbox Series X and has become one of the most popular gaming consoles in the world. In this two year review, I go through its availability, design, user interface, some of the key features, its performance, the game's library, updates, accessories, as well as its pros and cons. So buckle up and let's go for the ride. As most of us would have experienced during its initial release, the PlayStation 5 was extremely difficult to find in stock and many retailers sold out within minutes of restocking. This was likely due to scalpers buying huge quantities and reselling at extremely inflated prices, which left many consumers frustrated and unable to purchase the console at its regular retail price. Personally, I had to pay the resale price but thank goodness it wasn't extremely high at the time and the price was fairly reasonable. Things have somewhat improved since then and as of last year, December, Sony announced it was their biggest month for PS5 sales so far. Something to note though, the price did increase by 50 Australian dollars for those in Australia, with a digital edition console going for 649 Australian dollars up from its original recommended retail price of 599 Australian dollars, and the disc version going for 799 Australian dollars up from its original recommended retail price of 750. One of the most striking things about the PlayStation 5 is its design. The consoles have a sleek and futuristic look that is sure to impress and they come in two variants, the digital edition and disc version. In my opinion, the digital edition is better as most people don't buy the physical discs anymore. The original body of the console is white with black accents and distinctive curved lines, although Sony has since released a variety of faceplate colorways and I'll be looking to grab myself a few in an upcoming setup makeover. If you'd ask me, the design tends to evoke that feeling of speed and power and it definitely succeeds in that regard when playing games such as Gran Turismo 7. At the time of release, Sony only had the white and black console, the DualSense controller, a charging dock, headphones, a remote controller and a camera. Since then, we've had a bunch of controllers released including the Cosmic Red, God of War Ragnarok and most recently, the DualSense Edge controller which gets released to the public on the 26th of January. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell as I'll be doing an unboxing and first impressions of the DualSense Edge controller. Just to give you guys a snippet of what's to come, we'll be getting adjustable triggers, swappable thumbsticks and mappable back buttons among many other insane features. Like mentioned earlier, Sony also released their swappable faceplates and they come in a variety of colorways. Before that, we only had third-party faceplates from brands like Dbrand, which really held up well. Amazon also has plenty of affordable ones and I'll leave a link of some of them in the description box. When it comes to performance, the console is powered by a custom AMD Zen 2 processor and a Radeon RDNA 2 GPU, which has enabled me play graphic intense games, although I haven't been able to enjoy frame rates of up to 120 FPS since my Samsung Q68 doesn't have support for that. Nonetheless, being a casual gamer, I don't need all the bells and whistles, so it works just fine. The massive screen in tandem with its powerful processor makes for a very smooth and immersive gaming experience with highly detailed graphics and fast loading times. In addition to that, the console's solid set drive has also significantly reduced loading times when immersed in my gaming sessions and that has certainly improved the overall performance and user experience of the console. Its built-in support for ray tracing has enabled me to enjoy more realistic lighting and shadows in games. Take for example a game like Gran Turismo 7, the colors, the shadows and lighting are just next level. In addition to that, its 3D audio processing unit in tandem with my Samsung Q950T soundbar has enabled me to enjoy an immersive audio experience thanks to this technology which simulates sounds that come from different directions and distances, making it feel as though sounds are coming from all around the player. And it gets even more interesting, with games becoming more graphic intense and needing more processing power, the consoles can heat up and make lots of noises without a proper cooling system. The PlayStation 5's cooling system uses a custom designed high speed fan that can spin up to 7500 rotations per minute which has ensured my console stays cool when I'm deep in my campaigns thus ensuring a smooth gaming experience. When it comes to the controller performance, the DualSense controller has held up so well and with features like the haptic feedback, I've been able to immerse myself in gameplays thanks to the different tactile sensations. The most satisfying the vibrations that come after a poster on NBA 2K23. 
Moving along, its adaptive triggers have also come in clutch when simulating different levels of resistance depending on the in-game action. I can only imagine how next level the DualSense Edge controller will be with all those extra features. Make sure you sub to the channel so that you don't miss out the hands-on review. As many of us would agree, one of the key considerations when choosing a gaming console is the game's library, and over the past two years the PlayStation 5 has had strong offerings in that regard. Since launch, we've seen a diverse and extensive games library, with titles ranging from first-party exclusives like Spider-Man Miles Morales and Demon Souls, to third-party titles like Call of Duty, Black Ops Cold War, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and most recently God of War Ragnarok, among many others, and there's definitely more to come. Many of the PlayStation 5 launch titles such as Demon's Souls and Spider-Man Miles Morales were built from the ground up to take advantage of the console's powerful hardware, resulting in stunning graphics and smooth performance. I've also enjoyed a wide range of different genres and types of games including action, adventure, first-person shooter, sports, racing games as well as a variety of indie titles. In addition to that, its support for cross-gen play has allowed me to play with friends and others who still own the PS4 and PS3 consoles. The game help feature has also come in clutch by allowing me to get tips and hints when playing different games and it doesn't stop there. Its boost mode feature also allows users to play PS4 games with better graphics. The user interface of the PlayStation 5, also known as the PlayStation Dynamic Menu, has been fast, intuitive and allows for customization to one's liking. Its modern and minimalist design has made navigation so easy and I bet most of you would agree with that. Some of the key features of the PlayStation 5 user interface include the ability to quickly launch games and apps from the home screen with the option to pin frequently used titles for easy access. Another one would be the control center which is a quick access menu that allows users to adjust settings, check notifications and view their friends list. Moving along, it also has the ability to personalize the home screen with custom backgrounds and themes and in addition to that, we also get to search for games and content using natural language, making it easier to find what you're looking for, just to name but a few. Another special feature we've got on the user interface is the activities menu, which allows players to jump directly into specific missions, challenges or objectives within a game. This has allowed for a more seamless experience for any player. Moving on to the PlayStation Plus, over here we've seen the merging of the PlayStation Plus and PS Now into three tiers, starting with the Essential Plan which comes with your downloadable monthly games, cloud storage and multiplayer access. Next up we have the Extra Plan which is pretty much the same as the Essential Plan with an additional 400 PS4 and 5 games. To cap it off we have the Premium Plan which unlocks PS3 game streaming, time limited trials and a host of PS1 and 2 and PSP games. When it comes to update, there hasn't been significant physical changes on both the digital and disc version consoles. As for the accessories, we've seen a bunch of stuff get released from controllers to third-party accessories, you name it. The most anticipated at this point in time being the DualSense Edge controller, which comes out towards the end of this month. After almost two years of use, here are a few pros and cons. First and foremost, its impressive performance is one of the key standouts thanks to its powerful hardware that can run games at high resolutions and frame rates, which makes for a smooth, immersive gaming experience. Another aspect would be the haptic feedback we've been getting from the DualSense controller, which allows it to simulate a wide range of tactile sensations and adds an extra layer of immersion into gameplay. This is going to get even better with the DualSense Edge controller thanks to those extra features like adjustable triggers, swappable thumbsticks and mappable back buttons, among many others. Another must mention is the games library. Having a stacked games library is an absolute delight and true gamers out there wouldn't agree more. The PlayStation 5 has a strong selection of exclusives and cross-gen games as well as backward compatibility with many games from the previous gen consoles. To sum up the pros, its ray tracing cutting edge graphics technology enhances the realism of lighting and shadows in games and with a TV like the LG C2 OLED, it's just absolute bliss. Moving away from the silver lining, the PS5 also has its cons. First and foremost is the price. The PlayStation 5 is one of the more expensive gaming consoles on the market, which may be a deterrent for some consumers, and not too long ago, the prices were bumped up with the digital edition console going for 649 Australian dollars, up from its original RRP of 599, and the disc version going for 799, up from its original price point of 750. Size is also another factor, and the PlayStation 5 console is quite large, which may be an issue for those with limited space in their homes, or if you want to travel with it. Rumors of the PlayStation 
PlayStation 5 Slim have been circulating, but Sony hasn't confirmed anything yet. Just like in the PlayStation 4, a slimmer version would be a welcome addition for most PlayStation enthusiasts. Another issue would be the limited storage, as the console comes with an SSD that has relatively limited storage compared to some of the other gaming platforms. This may be an issue for those who have a large library of games or who plan to download a lot of content. The good thing is, you can store games on an external SSD and plug it into your console or install an internal SSD thanks to the update we saw after the first year of release. In conclusion, the PlayStation 5 is on its way to becoming one of the most successful consoles for Sony thanks to its strong sales and a positive reception from critics and gamers alike. The console's powerful hardware, combined with its unique features such as the DualSense, the DualSense Edge controller and the integration of the PlayStation Plus collection has made it a must-have for many gamers. Additionally, the PlayStation 5 has seen a steady stream of high-quality games released for it, with even more to come in the future. Overall, the two years after its release, the PlayStation 5 remains a strong option for gamers looking for a high-performance console with a wide variety of games and features. If you've got to this point of the video, thank you so much, and just in case you forgot to like and subscribe, please hit those buttons as they help the channel to grow. To see how my PlayStation 5 fits in both my living room and home office gaming setups, check out these videos. People of the internet, I'm signing out, see you on the next one.